A fiscal update out today where some figures uh, around the country's economy and some predictions uh, are revealed. And of course, um, you would be living under a rock if you didn't recognise that we are expected to head to a recession. Uh, and much of the talk next year and the next year's election year is going to be about the economy. Part of that is the government, it would seem long after time, deciding to have a look at what it's spending your money on. And one of the most expensive and high-profile single projects um, that, are, that is on the cards for this government is the merger of Television New Zealand and Radio New Zealand with a uh, pretty cool price tag of around, I think, $750 million. Why are we doing that? What are the benefits we will get? But now uh, the question, uh, according to our first guest this morning, is will it even happen? We are joined by uh, National's Deputy Leader, Nicola Willis. Nicola, thank you for joining us this morning and season's greetings to you. Good morning, Sean, and season's greetings to you. Great to be on the show. All right. The government seems to be in a process of going through saying and carving off the nice-to-haves from the must-haves in terms of, of government expenditure. Do you think, for a start, that that's the right thing to do right now? Well, it would have been the right thing to do a year ago, two years ago, uh, and, yeah, good on them for finally working out they should be doing it, but National has been calling for a peering back of this sort for many, many months, uh, and we have been told that that's not the right idea. Well, suddenly it appears the Prime Minister has woken up and smelt the coffee and seen what's around the corner. Uh, but we, we just wish these steps had been taken a lot earlier. We've been calling for a stop to the Television New Zealand, Radio New Zealand merger for many months, uh, and it's a shame they've already thrown millions of dollars at it. All right. Why do you think it should be stopped? Why do you think it is low quality or a nice-to-have uh, piece of a government expenditure? Well, the first thing is, in the middle of a cost-of-living crisis, when government spending is putting direct pressure on inflation... It's important that the government makes sure that every dollar of government spending is well prioritised. And we just find it very hard to understand how throwing hundreds of millions of dollars at a merger of our two public broadcasters is a priority right now. I'm yet to meet a New Zealander who said to me, you know what I really want to see uh, is a merger. Uh, so that's the first reason. The second reason is that actually when you look across the media landscape, one of the things that people do have concern about is the diminishing number of different outlets for news. And so it seems really crazy to reduce that by merging things into one entity. The government's never explained why it thinks that will lead to a better service. And that does leave a lot of people wondering, well, is this actually about command and control? Well, Willie Jackson might have us believe that Radio New Zealand is on the brink of collapse. Well, uh, th these were just nonsensical comments because there's two things. The first is Radio New Zealand is completely publicly funded. So if Willie's saying it's on the verge of collapse, is he saying that the government's on the verge of not funding it? Because that seems to be quite a separate issue uh, from whether or not a merger is required. Uh, and the second thing is that its audience numbers uh, have no correlation uh, with its funding. So if what he is saying is that he wants Radio New Zealand to do more to attract a bigger audience, well, that's a separate issue. But there's no uh, evidence that a merger uh, will lead to that result. Mm. Uh, the uh, fiscal update out today, what are you expecting in that? Yeah, well, look, there's two things out today. The fiscal update on what's happened to the Crown accounts over the past six months and some forecasts for the future. And then the second thing is the budget policy statement, which outlines at a high level what the Minister of Finance is planning to do with the government finances next year. What we know uh, is that there is a tricky, tricky path ahead with interest rates rising fast, inflation sticking around and growth forecasts set to come down. So what I want to see is the government getting back to brass tacks, doing some really good reprioritisation of money that's not in the right places now, doing that peering back that should have happened immediately after the COVID splurges, 
but that the government has really struggled to do, pushing money to the front line, away from the bureaucracy where it seems to be getting stuck under Labor. And look, it really is time for the government to say, you know what, inflation has pushed a lot of people into higher tax brackets. We will make room in our budget next year for some tax reduction for working Kiwis. All right. Um, Besides Television New Zealand, which is an easy, if you like, target or thing to talk about, big chunk of money um, in most people's minds and and high, uh, kind of high profile organisations involved, where else do you think there are savings for the government and therefore the taxpayer? Well, certainly across the bureaucracy. Uh, the, the measure of the core public service shows that it's grown by about 14,000 people since Labor came to power. Now, that's not frontline nurses and teachers and police officers. Uh, that's people in the administration, policy advisor, managerial roles. Media relations, that, if you look at Waka Kotahi or the transport and, agency. Exactly, indeed. And it's those PR roles and those spin roles. Uh, And at the same time, the government's spending more than a billion dollars a year on external consultants. So we've got this massive build-up in the advice and spin machine, which is out of all proportion to what's getting to the front line. So we want to see a peering back there and a real focus on getting resources to the front line. Uh, the, The other thing that we see is that there have been these essentially bribery funds set up to dole money out to councils to make them feel good about three waters. Well, we've got a cheaper answer. Just get rid of three waters. Uh, Then you won't have to throw billions of dollars at trying to make people like it. Mm. Uh, And then when we look across government, what we see is that there are a number of initiatives which fall into the category of nice to have but not essential right now. And we think there should be a line-by-line review of every agency to look at what are the items that wouldn't make the cut right now, given there are households doing exactly the same thing on a weekly basis. Yeah, it's almost as if we need to have a, a, a national strategy that matches what will be happening happening around kitchen tables all all around the country in months to come. I, I do yeah, look at the front. Right. I do look at the front page of the Dominion Post this morning. The half price fares likely to end. Um, the relaxation of the fuel excise tax likely to end uh, end of February. Surely you'd be supportive of that? We are supportive of that. What we've always said is that those measures are, while helpful in their time, were only ever temporary band-aids. And the problem with a band-aid is eventually you have to rip it off. What we've wanted to see is instead a plan that addresses the underlying drivers of inflation rather than just its uh, symptoms and effects. And that's why we've said instead of doing a little dollop of cost of living cash here, or a little dollop of uh, bus, bus fares here, instead what the government should be doing is getting back and saying what costs and regulations can we remove from business? What can we do to get some workers into the country? What can we do to bring some discipline to our own spending? How can we get the Reserve Bank back focused on a mandate of inflation busting? And how can we make sure that the tax system is adjusted for this inflationary environment we're in? Right. Um, Another report out yesterday suggesting that, um, or looking at it, I guess the quality of the money we do spend um, and looking at some uh, issues involving contracting to companies associated with relatives of Nanaya Mahuta, would you call that, uh, or the processes there, to have been high quality, um, high quality processes that were a good good spend of taxpayers' money? Well, look, I understand the report is clear that good processes were not followed, and that is a worry because we give government departments uh, considerable discretion about how they procure and contract services. And I think all taxpayers have a right to expect that when they do that, the processes are appropriately open, competitive and transparent. Uh, And this report found that that was not the case in these instances. And that's a real worry. Mm. Uh, Look, finally, uh, and we've got them actually, uh, we've got them up next after the news at at, at 7.30, a little brouhaha in Parliament yesterday at a a microphone and, gosh, it's a lesson uh, that's hard to learn even in broadcasting after all these years, treat all microphones as live. The Prime Minister said something uncharitable, uncharitable about uh, David Seymour. Um, It might just be a mere bagatelle, as they say. 
do you people talk like that behind each other's backs when we're not listening about each other, or did, did that surprise you? Uh, uh, look, we, we don't really, but I think, you know, it's clear. The Prime Minister is at the end of the year, a little bit at the end of her tether, I think, uh, she's had a really rough couple of weeks. She's had a cabinet minister, and I'm a hooter, openly defying a cabinet decision over entrenchment of three waters. Uh, she's had to backtrack on an immigration issue the government stubbornly defended uh, for seven months. She's had huge public problem over the uh, three waters incident. She's backing down all over the place, where it's the TVNZ or RNZ merger or any other initiative. Uh, and I think when I look across the other side, I see a group of tired people, bedraggled people, and I think they all need a good break over Christmas. And goodness knows, New Zealand needs much fresher leadership next year. All right. Um, you don't, didn't agree with her assessment of, of Mr Seymour's uh, character? No. All right. Hey, Nicola, I thank you very much indeed uh, for that rundown, and I guess we see what the figures are. Uh, this afternoon and next year we'll see whether or not this merger indeed does proceed. Um, happy holidays to you. And to you too, Sean. Have a great day. Cheers. That is uh, Nicola Willis, Deputy Leader of the National Party. Uh, and I've got to say, look, I just want to mention, and we might briefly mention it with uh, David Seymour, the Prime Minister did say sorry directly to David Seymour. He's accepted the apology. That's what happens between grown-ups. But wasn't it that the mask slipped a little bit? the mask of kindness. And I have to say, in the context of, of, of Parliament, it's quite a slip. It does reveal something uh, uh, about character.